What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Of course, my name is Gareth from Park Cameras, as it always is, and I assume as it always will be. But today, more importantly than that, we're gonna be talking about flat lay photography because of course, it's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and, every, each and every Tuesday we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. And this week, of course, no different, it's Tuesday after all, and we're going to be talking about flat lay photography. Now, this is a super interesting, very creative and versatile type of photography. And it just so happens you can do this at home without having to leave, without having to go outside. So it's a great thing to be doing in lockdown and of course all the time but certainly right now in lockdown last week we talked about three different types of lockdown photography and while we didn't specifically talk about flat lay photography we certainly kind of touched upon it a little bit so i thought it'd be cool to actually talk about it properly do a full tutorial all about it because it is actually super fun as well now essentially this is taking photos of pretty much anything products you know food could be almost anything at all top down so you're looking straight down onto it on an actual kind of flat lay background kind of backdrop surface surface is the word that i'm looking for so we're going to run through five different tips that you can get the most out of flat lay photography that you can really kind of capture what you want to capture and this applies to almost anything you want to photograph like say food sweets toys it's kind of product photography, your camera gear, almost anything at all. So let's dive straight in. First of all, most important probably is the surface you're going to actually take the photo on. This is a huge decision because it affects massively the tone of the photo. So is it going to be dark? In which case things are going to pop from it. Is it going to be light and kind of soften the feel of things and give you that kind of nice feel to your photo? Is it going to be super colorful? There's loads of different ways that you can go with this. I love using wood, for example. That's probably my favorite. I love the look of it. I think loads of stuff looks good on wood. But of course, you want to match that surface to whatever you're taking photograph of. So for example, when I was doing sweets and, and kind of fizzy drinks and stuff like that for a client, I was using colored card that I got from a craft store for about a pound. There's loads of different colors that you can get and I picked up a bunch so I could actually mix things up with red and blue and all kinds of stuff. And that looks really good for some sweets. But in some situations, I wanna use a dark background. I was just using black card with kind of sweets dotted around and the drinks just popping out because of the color. In this photo, when I was taking a photo of a notepad, I was using a nice kind of white wood kind of flat lay surface because I think it looks really homely. It looks really kind of comforting and cozy. I think it works really well with what we were photographing and it allows the color of the notepad and all that kind of stuff to pop out from the white. So you really want to try and match whatever you're taking the photo of with the surface you're using and anything can be a surface. Like I say, wood, great. Old wood out in the shed could look really, really good. You know, tiles, carpet, anything because the second thing we need to talk about, and this is big as well, is texture. And this really applies mostly to the surface you're gonna use. So that's why I say old wood out in the shed, actually that's gonna have some really nice texture to it. And depending on what you're taking a photo of, a nice bottle of whiskey, for example, whoo, that's gonna look nice on the wood. And that texture is really gonna give it a kind of a tactile feel to the whole photo. You could even go so far as to add your own texture to the photo. So for example, with the sweets, when I was taking photos of the fizzy drinks and stuff like that, I was just using the pieces of card that I was talking about earlier. So they don't really have much of a texture to them. I would just sprinkle the sweets around the photo and that kind of fills in those empty gaps, but it also gives a, a nicer feel overall to the photo. If you're gonna do kind of an art, kind of flat lay photography where you're talking about drawing and you've got a nice kind of sketchbook and then a pencil and stuff like that, absolutely you could pop some pencil shavings in there. You wanna, you wanna actually sharpen that pencil and use those shavings just dotted around because it just gives a tactile feel to the photo and adds that extra element, just goes just beyond. Of course, we need to talk about lighting as well. And actually this plays a little bit into texture. So there's certainly situations where I haven't been able to use a nice texture, but I have been able to shape the light to get a different kind of feel, a different dimension to the photo. Now there's loads to talk about with lighting, but essentially it comes down to how you're gonna light the scene. I just use a one continuous light, nice and soft, very diffuse off in one corner. So you get a little bit of shadow, but they're nice and soft. You 
could use just a window. that We've talked about this a bunch of times, but essentially that works like a big soft box. So if you just shoot near to the window, you're gonna get a nice soft light coming down onto whatever it is you're photographing. So that can work really well. But that's not the only thing with light. You can use it a little bit like we were talking about with the texture. And like I said before, to shape that light, to give a different dimension to your photo. So for example, this photo of these suites where I've, where I've got this kind of tunnel of light, all I did was use a few cushions to actually block the light in certain areas. And essentially, it ends up with this tunnel of light. Really easy, actually pretty quick to do as well, but nice and effective as well. Because I didn't want to use kind of loads of suites everywhere because it would defeat the point of the photo. But being able to shape the light like that, Lovely. When I took some photos of my camera gear, I was gonna essentially just use a normal kind of flat lay with a bit of wood and then have a continuous light. And then I noticed the sun was coming in through the window in such a way onto my table and I really wanted to use it. So I still use the continuous light to kind of fill in everything else, but that, that sunlight was able to really add a different dimension to the rest of the photo. So now that we've talked about all of that, Let's talk about how you're actually going to lay out your actual photo. How you're going to lay out these things. Now, the first thing to think about is, do you have one main object and then props around it? Or do you have a bunch of main objects that are all equally important? So, for example, a bunch of camera gear where nothing is the most important. It's all kind of equally important. Let's talk about having one main object first and how you're going to set that up. Now, I would assume you're probably going to put it center frame. There's loads of different ways to be creative with this, but generally I would, that's how I would start. Put it center frame, and then we're gonna add things in around it. So let's go back to the notepad photo that I showed you earlier. I've added in a pen, because obviously, right, that's gonna be part of it. It gives you a bit of feel to the photo. And then I've just added in things around the notepad to kind of bring the photo to life and add kind of a, a story element to it. So for example, notepad's in the middle, pen on the top, because we're gonna be writing in there. Nice plant off to the side, just kind of sets the scene a little bit. A coffee, because that makes sense, right? You're gonna be drinking your coffee while you're writing your notepad. A candle, which I think just adds to the kind of ambience of the whole thing. And then my watch, I just set off to the side because it felt right at the time. But there's loads of different stuff that you could try as long as you're thinking about the kind of story of the photo. So for example, if I was gonna do headphones instead of a notepad, I might use things like my phone. I might use things like my laptop, you know, techie things, which are gonna tell the story of when I'm using the headphones, what I'm doing with them, and things like that. Now, if you've got multiple items, like with your camera gear, you need to think massively about the balance of your photo. And this is really important with this kind of flat lay photography. If you've got big items and then small items, you don't wanna have all the big items over to one side and all the small items over to the other side because the balance of the photo is gonna be massively off. And the easiest way to think about this is literally having a flat photo and like you're placing the items on it, which is essentially what you're doing, I guess, but as if that is literally balanced on something. So you wanna think about actually having that not tip one way or the other. And if you can do that, you're gonna get the balance spot on. So essentially, if you've got a bunch of big objects, you wanna space them around, probably distributed relatively evenly between probably the four corners of the photo. Then you might have your smaller objects dotted around in the spaces between. It's one of those things that you can feel when it's wrong, but it's not necessarily super obvious that that's what the problem is. But as long as you're thinking about it when you're setting things up, you're gonna get nice balance and it's gonna work really well. It just helps when the viewer is looking at the photo, even if that's you, when you're looking at the photo, it just feels better when it's well balanced. So those are our tips for flat lay photography, but I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on flat lay. I love it. I think it's super creative, super fun, and it's super easy to do at home as well. But I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. If you have any tips, any stories about flat lay photography you've done or anything at all, anything you want to share, pop it all down in the comments. I'd love to hear about that. Any questions, of course, pop them down there as well. We'll go back to you ASAP. Now, there's a full list of kits used for all the photos, this video, everything down in the description so you can go and check that out for yourself if you would like as well. I'd love it if you liked the video and subscribed as well. That would whoo, that'd really help us out. I'd love that. But of course, either way, I will see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.